Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Bloody Jacob here to bring you another movie review. This time we're going to be talking about the post-apocalyptic drama Maggie, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger and Abigail Breslin. And, uh, yeah, I just uh, checked out this movie last night uh, on a certain online website. I'm not going to give away here, but this is also available on DVD and Blu-ray now, I believe, and you, know, you can also find it. You might still be able to find it on demand. But, uh... The yeah, film has an interesting history. It was going to premiere originally at the 2014 Toronto Film Festival. Then it got, uh, it was, uh, let me just read you what I was looking at, okay? Um, to remind myself. Um, yeah. Lionsgate bought the American distribution rights, and they pulled the film out of the Toronto roster for that festival. And then they had a premiere at the Tribeca Film Festival in 2015. And then as I knew, it got a limited theatrical release and a video on demand release around May 8th. So, yeah, of course, uh, the main appeal to me was the film star Arnold Schwarzenegger. And uh, I'm just going to say right off the bat, I'm a huge Arnold Schwarzenegger fan. He's probably my favorite action hero of all time. You know, when you think of uh, action stars like in the 80s and 90s, you know, like you're. Uh, well, Schwarzenegger's or Stallone's, Van Damme's, uh, you know, just people like that. My favorite was always Arnold Schwarzenegger by far. There's just something about him. I feel like he could do, you know, he could do, like, some serious drama, but at the same time, he has, like, a hell of a lot of fun in most of his movies, too. And he could do, like, humor really well, too. And I just connected with him more than uh, someone like Sylvester Stallone. But, uh, so I was very eager to see uh, Arnold... Arnold's uh, performance in this movie because, you know, usually, yeah, you think of him as, like, the action hero, like I just talked about, and this is a very different role compared to anything else I've seen him in, and apparently it's a pretty different role compared to what a lot of other people have seen him in, too, and one of the biggest things I was praised about this movie was his performance, so I he had quite the high expectations, and it pretty much met him. Uh, he does a great job in this movie. Uh, the story is pretty simple. Um, it's pretty uh, straightforward. Uh, you know what you're kind of getting into, and that's kind of what you get. But the story, like being uh, complex or uh, full of twists or things like that, isn't really the main appeal to this. It's not really the main point, I should say. Uh, what it's really about is obviously what you think. Uh, it's like a post-zombie apocalypse type of world. Uh, Arnold's character and uh, Abigail Breslin's are in, and you know there was a zombie apocalypse, but at this point where the movie starts, it's sort of starting to wind down. You know things are starting to slowly, ever so slowly, go back to normal. I believe, but you know there's still zombies around, but it's not quite as like abundant as like the start of the zombie apocalypse, or like abundant like it is with The Walking Dead or something like that. And we also learn that. Of course, Abigail Breslin is Arnold Schwarzenegger's character's uh, daughter in the movie. And we learn that they had lost her mother and his wife at some point prior. Whether she was lost uh, to the apocalypse by one of the zombies, or if she had like passed away prior to that. I'm not entirely sure. Someone correct me on that below, if you remember. But, uh, yes, nonetheless, their family had uh, already dealt with a lot of loss, and... At some point before the movie starts, Abigail Breslin, uh, Maggie, of course, is infected. She is bitten. And so the whole movie is kind of about Arnold Schwarzenegger sort of having to come to terms with what he might have to do. You know, his choices are very few and far in between. Uh, you know, so he only has really two options. You know, he, he can either... Uh, what he wants to do is spend as many moments that he could have left with his daughter, you know, and well trying to hold on to any possible chance for, you know, to get her out of it. Because that's what any father or any parent really wants to do is be the one to protect their child no matter what. And imagine what it feels like to completely fail in that task in the biggest, most fatal way possible. And that's what Arnold's character is going through in this movie. And, uh, of course, both of their names being Vogel, you know, of course, Maggie Vogel, obviously, then Arnold's character is Wade, and 
the two choices he has I just mentioned, you know, include trying to keep her a hold of her, trying to spend his last days with her and eventually have to put her down himself. Or he can take her to this government sanctioned uh, quarantine type of thing. And, you know, there's a lot of mixed opinions as far as uh, what actually happens there. But we kind of find out, you know, later that, you know, it's really not that good there. You know, they try to make it seem like they're going to hold your hand and make it all comfortable and nice for you while, you know, you're going through all this or you're infected. But apparently the real reality is that they just throw you in, like, one big room together. It doesn't matter what stage of infection you're at. Which in this movie, apparently, the average is between six to eight weeks. But it could be more, could be less, depending on the person. And you so they throw you into this room, apparently. And, you know, no matter what stage, like I said, and, you know, you're just kind of treated like experiments or just being studied and being just looked down upon, things like that. So Arnold, uh, well, I should say Wade, is, you know, is kind of aware of what it would be like there. And, you know, he has this uh, cop friend, too, you know, who's trying to linger around, trying to, you know, kind of push him to just say, I can't over quarantine, you know, it's going to be what you're going to have to do anyway. And, you know, he's supposed to be a friend of the family, but then there's this other cop who's more, you can tell he's more of like a douche. <laughs> and, you know, he just, you can tell he's going to be the one to cause some trouble later, and he does. But, uh, of course, the best thing about this movie, also who's in it, I should say, I should mention her, is Jolie Richardson as Caroline Vogel. And, you know, I'm pretty sure she's either Wade or Arnold's uh, second wife, or his girlfriend, at least. And, you know, they're staying with her. And she does a pretty good job in this movie, too. And, you know, she's just uh, having a really tough time dealing with, uh, you know, uh, Maggie as well. But, uh, it's a, the, really the best thing about it is, of course, the relationship between Wade and Maggie. And that's what really carries the film, is the chemistry between uh, Arnold and Abigail. And both of them do a very, very fine job. It's probably the best acting performance I've seen from Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, like I said, I love a lot of his movies, but this role is just completely different from the other ones, and he really delivers with this. You know, he has this subtle strength about him. He looks tough, like you think Arnold usually would. And at the same time, he has this, like, uh, depth and complexity, but also a uh, vulnerability about what he may have to do, about what he's having to see his daughter go through, how he's having to see her suffer. So he portrays that really well. And Abigail Breslin is great in this, too. I, I, to be honest, I haven't seen her in too much. I remember seeing her in Zombieland, maybe a couple other things here and there, but this is probably her best performance, too. And I like the makeup they use for her slow, uh, subtle transformation, too. You know, it's not like as... When she, like, really gets closer to, be, you know, being a zombie, you know, she it's a little bit more uh, subtle than, like, something like The Walking Dead. You know, she's probably going to start decaying eventually. She sort of does in this movie. But in this, they have it look more like a realistic illness, disease type of thing instead of more like the horror, uh, action-oriented and things and stuff like that. And one of the other uh, uh, good aspects about the movie is we do see other zombies in it, except for the most part, they're people that Wade and Maggie had previously known, you know, when they were uh, human, of course. And, like, it's their neighbors and, you know, their neighbors' kids and things like that. Uh, Wade runs into a couple of them in the woods, and, you know, he has to put them down. And it's not portrayed, like, when he puts down the zombies in the movie, it's not like The Walking Dead, you know, it's not, like, meant to be, like, a gore fest. It's not meant to be, like, exciting or, you know, a geek out moment or anything like that. Even though it is cool to see Arnold Schwarzenegger kill zombies in however which way possible. But it's portrayed in, like, a very tragic, uh, light, you know, something of course, obviously something that he doesn't want to do and something that, you know, he just kind of has to do and you know, that, you know, some people probably couldn't even put down people they know if they were to see him like that, you know, so you can imagine what it takes out of him just to do that and that makes him think about his daughter and there's a couple the movie overall is kind of uh, depressing, I'll, I'll be honest uh, but really that's what it would be so it's very realistic to a situation like this 
if it were to actually happen. But uh, there are a couple touch touching moments in the movie, like uh, where Maggie, uh, like a uh, part of the middle of the movie actually focuses on Maggie more than Wade, and I was a little bit irritated by that at first, was because I'm in it for Arnold, you know, but. Uh, Maggie or uh, Abigail Breslin is actually able to carry these scenes herself, which was uh, which I was impressed by. And you know, we see her spend some time with a previous love interest. You know, a boyfriend she may have had. They're both infected, and you know, uh, Maggie's friends try to take her out to have a good time, even though her best friend sort of like knows what's going on, sort of gives a tearful goodbye to her. And Maggie is able to share like one last moment with her boyfriend. You know, like they're kissing and stuff. Just retain that bit of life, that bit of youth you gotta appreciate. But her boyfriend, uh, I think his name was Trent, was carried off. Uh, he was taken to quarantine, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, what happens to him, you can kind of assume. And, uh, so yeah, that's all very good, too. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the ending in a second. But, yeah, another touching moment in the movie is where, uh, Arnold, or Wade takes uh, Maggie to the, her mother's garden and apparently Arnold had uh, planted the, the sunflower, not sunflowers, but you know he planted the flowers there and you know, had, they had actually grown when everything else was you know just decayed and just burned or dead or something along those lines and you know, so that gives like you a glimmer of hope in the movie, one of the very very few moments in the movie that are like that and it's just very, very sad to see uh, Maggie slowly transform, slowly turn into something she isn't. You know, like we see that she, you know, nudges her finger, then, you know, it's like all broken and you can see it's not looking like a regular hand anymore, you know, the way it's bleeding and things like that. And she actually cuts off that finger, which is pretty uh, dark and, you know, portrayed as such. And then, you know, at, like part of the process also is that she's eventually going to stop she's eventually gonna lose her appetite as she doesn't lose she doesn't want to eat anything and then she's gonna get it all back except it'll be for flesh she'll like smell the meat from humans and things like that but you know it also applies to animals at first too and so when she sees this fox out in the woods um you know her first inclination is actually to you know let it go and release it but when she lifts it up she actually attacks the fox and you know eats it a little bit and you know it's really horrifying and pretty uh, scary when she comes back and you know the blood's all over her mouth and things like that. And uh, Wade goes back into the woods, finds the fox who's still barely alive, and you know puts it down, which is pretty sad too. Again, depressing. But uh, the ending of the movie, we can talk about that now. It, well, whoa, 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 wait, wait, now. Uh, then the like two cops I mentioned come back later and there's a brief fight scene between Arnold and the more arrogant douche type of cop I told you about. Uh, of course, uh, Wade, you know, I call him Arnold again, but, you know, Wade, he pins him down on the ground with a shotgun and gets the advantage, but Maggie interrupts before anything bad can really happen between them. Uh, so there's that, and the ending to the movie is... It's not happy, we'll say that. You know, it's kind of the one it was, like, building up towards the whole time. And, uh, we see Wade, he's sort of sitting in the chair late at night, and, you know, he has a shotgun. And we see Maggie come down the stairs, and, you know, she's kind of sniffing around him as he's supposedly asleep in the chair. And, you know, we think, you know, it's kind of like teasing that tenseness of, oh, yeah, she could bite him here, try to kill him here. But now she actually kisses him on the head, and you know she goes up to the roof, and then we see that Wade was actually awake the whole time, just waiting to see what she would do, and he loads the shotgun with one shell, you know, and we get the sense that yes, this is the moment where he's going to do it. You know, he's finally going to you know shoot her and put her down, unfortunately, like he has to. But what Maggie does is she goes up to the roof and she jumps off and kills herself, which is pretty dark, very sad. But, you know, it's either going to be that or uh, Wade having to put her down himself. And I'm guessing she probably didn't want to have her father actually go through that. So she did that, you know, just to sort of like put an end to it all for, you know, all parties involved pretty much. And it's a very sad ending. The movie uh, goes to cuts to black right there. 
but uh, really it was a very realistic take on what a zombie apocalypse could be or what a transformation like this could be. It's pretty, it pretty much feels as real as something like this could that I have seen. Um, the Walking Dead's pretty realistic too, but you know, of course, that's in it more for the action and the excitement of all, of it all, and this paints in a more realistic, tragic light. Uh, well, The Walking Dead's tragic too, but you know, it, this one's just even more dark and gloomy about it than even TWD is. So that's something. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so overall, I'd say it was a very, very good film with great performances in it, especially Arnold Schwarzenegger and Abigail Breslin, of course. Um, probably the best performance of Arnold Schwarzenegger's career that I've seen, anyway. And I really hope uh, he does some other more dramatic roles like this, as I think he, it's obvious now he can pull it off, as I always thought he could, but this film pretty much proves it. Abigail Breslin is very good in this movie as well, as was... Uh, let's see, forget her name again, uh, Jolie Richardson, she was good too, and then the whole cast is pretty solid all around, you know, even her, uh, main friend was pretty, uh, good while she was there too. But, uh, yeah, the only pick I'd have this movie that is, I wish there was a little bit more to the story, I know it was pretty much a straight shot, it gave us what we are, that we were, uh, ugh. it gave us what we, ugh. Sorry about this, but it gave us what it previewed, you know, it gave us what it was saying it would give us So I can't really complain about it too much, but I do wish there is more to the story I do wish there was like another twist or two in it, something a little bit more exciting And maybe a little bit more hope in it, I don't know, but <laughs> but uh, Yeah, so I wish there was more to the story, but overall it was simple and it did what it It did what it was in the story very very well and that was, of course, a tragic tale of a father and a daughter, which many people should be able to relate to, and both of the main characters are very relatable. Even Jolie Richardson's was, too. So yeah, overall, very good film with great performances. Uh, it may it may be a little bit sl too slow in some parts for people, but I still liked it quite a bit. So yeah, I definitely recommend checking this one out if you're a Schwarzenegger fan, if you're just a drama movie fan, if you're interested in a different type of zombie apocalypse take, then check it out. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about this movie. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you guys next time, most likely for my Penny Dreadful review tomorrow. So yeah, catch you guys for that, and uh, peace.